still need to age the beef, no matter how you do it. You either you dry age it or you wet age it. But wet age is not a thing. thing. It's like a, we, we, we believe wet aging is putrefaction. So you're just making it like... You're just making it, you're making it more tender. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're saving money. What are you doing? What did you work I eat like when we don't have dry age. We, you know, we work with these guys that dry age. We will have dry age in the future, but uh, I eat beef that's basically past expiration date. Sometimes a month, sometimes two months. Yeah, yeah. I open it up, and that's what we eat because uh, you know, fresh beef. Is, you can eat fresh beef no matter what, what quality it is. Uh, it's going to be very. Some people believe you can eat fresh beef. Some people believe that it's very, very good. This we had, we had propaganda in the Soviet Union because uh, the uh, guys that would buy from the uh, plants and they would need to sell on the market quickly, so they'd say, oh, fresh beef, buy fresh beef. It's, it's very bad for you because it has hormones in it from uh, when you do post rigor mortis, you have adrenaline in there. You okay, have other things, you can't, it's not good for you. We, we believe that it, yeah. it is, and you know, yeah. fresh, and he does as well, he, he understands. Okay. Um, I mean, it's you know, it's a thing. It's it's not it's not I mean, all fresh, but fresh is okay. There's, there's some science behind it. I mean, I'm, I didn't invent this stuff, but uh, at least uh, at least a few days you need to you need to age it. Yeah, of course, least, seven days. Yeah, that's fresh yeah, beef. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm talking about like just killed. Oh no, it's still no, warm. That's what I'm saying. No, no, no. Yeah. no, no, no. Stopped eating all the other rest of the animal when you know in the in the sixties and seventies. Uh, when supermarkets started to make the prime cuts more available. So historically, yeah, we eat everything, but only just recently have we started to come back to eating everything. Um, it's just taken, I mean, it will come back around again. But for like 30 years, it was just prime cuts. And the only way the supermarkets can, uh, can hold so many prime cuts is by intensive farming. Yeah, just, which but, we don't like. But but this is good because the pendulum swings back and forth, and now it's swinging back to people being more aware of where the product comes from, how it's raised, how it's fed. Yeah. You see, in, in Europe, the problem is that the uh, the meat the meat market is going through the roof, and it's incredibly expensive, and it's getting more and more expensive, and it probably is here as well. It's just going up and up. And the only way we can the only way we can keep eating meat is to is to eat it with the lesser cuts. Nose to tail, which is what you're doing here. Now. Exactly. Yeah. That's what we're that's our whole mission is to tell them that we want to move the whole focus. It's yeah. not about ribeyes and fillets, it's about shoulders, the uh, sirloin. Yeah. В Европе говядина и вообще мясо дорожает с, с такими темпами, что чтобы им нужно было, ну, обычному человеку можно было это есть, он должен покупать уже не, не, не классику, там, рибай, филе, а лопатки из костолучающих. Unfortunately, the custom, customers are still ordering ribeye and fillet, um, but slowly, slowly. Um, and we, we use bone marrow in so much about talking, we use it in our sauces, we use it in our burgers, we use it, uh, we serve it with langoustines, you know langoustines? Of course. So the bone marrow is uh, like, we consider it to be like a secret weapon. So how do you figure out the proportion, uh, proportion of, uh, well, of bone marrow to weight? To, to so that was 200 grams and this is just under two kilos, so okay. we weighed it. But, I mean, you, you look at the fat content, and if the fat content's a little bit heavier, you put less bone marrow in. But, why, would, why wouldn't you add just fat? Uh, bone marrow's got a different flavor, a better flavor. I mean, I think it has a better flavor. Uh, it's a beefy flavor. So we don't season, some, some places, 
some parts of the, parts of the world, they season their mix. And we would never season our mix. We season the outside of the burger. I don't know what you do here, but when, when they put salt into that, it cures it and it makes the texture strange. So when you make your burgers here, do you season the mix or season the outside? Inside. Okay, so that's that's different. That's what I mean. It's very different from what I do. The reason I also don't The reason we don't do that is because it cures the beef. And it makes it basically a beef sausage. But, I mean, you know, it's, it's all for taste, personal taste. Yeah. So they, they do it like, uh, you do it, they make it every day. So it's, it's yeah, I guess it, it cures it, but no more than a day. Okay. Just to say, when you add spices, it's получается эффект маринования, да, это вот он считает, что это как как сосиска, ну понятно, поэтому и собственно день в день. Да, день в день. How do you make a tartar here? You can make all the sizes. So they have one uh, that they make with uh, like a tenderizer, so they don't even cut the beef. They like kind of it's like kind of. Используя, в принципе, для всех своих товаров довольно жесткие изначальные части из бедра, ну, из бедра, из бедра, и вот, собственно, из хлопкаса, это из передней четверти. Различия, вариации в техниках подготовления, в принципе, подготовки, да, вот, собственно, в следующем и заключается. Для мотоцикла мы используем дендерайзер, это такой специальный девайс с 54 лезвиями, который...
Puccini uh, uh, in Italy, the butcher. Yeah, yeah, he's this one. Okay, yeah. but the one I had here yeah. was different to the one that Dario taught me. We just into there. Uh, so tell us about uh, what. What, what did he share with you? Okay, so Dario is like a, a genius butcher. He, he takes, uh, he does amazing things with, with raw pig fat, for instance. He, he pounds it and mix it with uh, rosemary, salt, garlic, red wine vinegar, and, um, and eats it raw and toast. Um, but his, his tartar, from memory, is just olive oil, lemon juice, Чиновники законодатели запрещают. Они говорят, знаете, они должны взять тендерлойн, вырезку, жить их полностью обжарить, потом срезать все то, что контур, и потом только можно делать тартар. Тяжело lemon juice, more salt, more pepper, but this is as much as I would add to it. And just see what you think. You can be honest if you don't like it. <laughs> um, so tomorrow we're, we're serving it with caviar, yes. which you all must know, you know, you, you must do tartar with caviar as well? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yes. Okay, well... We're in Russia, we just eat caviar. I know, I know, I know. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's sacrilege. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's okay? More salt? More salt? More salt? No? Okay. Um, it's okay. It's okay. Beef uh, uh, How many runs for one portion? Uh, we, we serve 90. But 90. 90. 90. But, I mean, your portions are bigger, right? Yeah. I saw a yeah. big one, portion. 150. 150, which is good. But, you know, we serve 90. Now um, in St. Petersburg, uh, uh, Russian people love tartar. Yeah, I love tartar. Unfortunately, I can't serve it. I love tartar also. I can't serve pink burgers or rare burgers. I can't serve, you know, many, many things. Also, it's perfect. So you come back to Russia? Maybe I move to Russia. Open up a restaurant here. Maybe. But one day, the environmental health will come to Russia. 
<laughs> yeah, they're, they're coming everywhere. We'll take care of them. <laughs> <laughs> Fancy stuff. French. It's very tasty beef. I like it. We're we using this for the caviar tomorrow. Same. Yeah. Okay. Should we cook some burgers? Tray like steaks and burgers and everything, just like this. So what do you cook with? Uh, you cook on a grill like this, or do you cook in like a uh, hosper? Or it, uh, we we use jospers. Uh, we I have one of these as well. Are you gonna cook this? I'm, I'm gonna cook it medium, but I mean it's gonna take a while. I just gotta leave on the edge here. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, I see what you mean. It, it collects the fat and, yeah. and, and, and it uh, drops it out. Yeah, so but it's this not is burning the track. For me, this is too hot. This is too hot. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's very, very hot. And I think it's okay. I usually do the four second rule. If you can hold it in your hand for four seconds, yeah. that's fine. I cook at lower temperatures. You cook at lower temperatures? Yeah, much lower temperatures. But, you know, it's each to the end. Exactly. Now, for some here, in the industry, in the business, how did you become a chef and a restaurateur? Uh, okay, I've been, I've been cooking for 20 years, okay. 20, then uh, I was eating some really nice food in good restaurants, okay. uh, looking after the client, and I thought, I really want to really cook. Really? So I asked a restaurant in England called The Gavroche, do you know The Gavroche? I've never been, but I've never been. It's a French, very famous French restaurant. Um, if I can go and work there, they said no, they said no, they said no, they said no. I kept on, I was persistent, eventually they let me in. And I, uh, I worked in the Gavroche for a little while. Then I went to work for Marco Pierre White, who's another chef in England, which is where I met Matt, the big fellow over there. Oh, okay. Matthew, he's right in the back. So uh, I cooked with Matthew at the restaurant Marco Pierre White, which had three stars, and, um, and then carried on until I ended up uh, cooking on a barbecue in my own pub. And that's when I started to use live fire. And now there are like 13 restaurants. You have 13 restaurants. Do you have any pickles? Do you have any pickles? Oh, just one. One pickle. No, 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 no. One pickle. That's it. One there. Thank you. Thank you very much. So what do you got there? Well... Some cheddar. In theory, it's uh, it's cheddar, but I don't think it is cheddar. It's not British cheddar. It's not cheddar. It's not cheddar. It looks like cheddar. Cheddar is a place in England. So, in theory, only if it comes from that place should it be called cheddar. Like champagne or cognac. Yeah, a little bit like that. Yeah. Okay, so Give them one more minute. What do you think is uh? What, what do you guys? How do you guys make your buns? Uh, you think we, buns is important for a burger? Yeah, but they need to be, a, they're a vehicle for the beef, so they need exactly. to be quite soft and exactly. and we toast them. We don't use seeds. Don't use seeds. No. Is, is it uh, potato bread? Or no? no, we use demi brioche. 
brioche. Like a half butter yeah. sort of brioche. Um, and no seeds and just like, it's very similar to this. This is very similar. But this is a beautiful thing. I mean, I love this. I've never seen it before. And it just smoulders and keeps things nice and warm. It's perfect. It's lovely. Um, uh, yeah, because most people don't understand. Burgers also like steak. You need to let it rest. Yeah, yeah. Ten minutes. You don't need a burger very often. No, no, exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave them in there for a few minutes. We have uh, a few different kinds of burgers. This one is the what we call cheeseburger, classic cheeseburger, and we just go with tomato on the tomato side. So we put tomato ketchup on the on the top side. Normally we'd only use uh, one, one slice of tomato. Okay, so we're just waiting for the burger to rest, and that goes on there, topped. And we normally serve it with a spear on the side, so you can eat the burger and eat nothing like this, alternate, rather than inside the burger. And then the other ones we do are things like the kimchi burger, which is kimchi burger, which is like um, uh, mustard mayo on the bottom, uh, lettuce, a big pile of kimchi, Patty, and then we have the cheese on top of the patty called Ogle Shield, which is washed. Which one? Ogle Shield. It's like a ch Ogle Shield. It's like a cheddar that's been washed over and over again. And when you wash a cheese, it goes funky. And we put the funky with the with the funky beef with the kimchi, and it's quite a well-known burger. Very tasty. We make the kimchi ourselves, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We make traditional, well, I make it to my taste. Traditional kimchi from Korea is uh, quite uh, challenging. That's what we say. Well, they ferment it for months, and it's like you open it, and it's like. Who wants it? Anyone? No? Anyone? It's very hot. Okay. Okay. It's hot. Hot plate, yeah? Hot plate. You cool it? Oh, it's hard as hell. Okay, so I'm going to cook this steak slowly. Um, I'm going to put it up there, I think, and just leave it for like 20 minutes. Um, how do you normally cook this one here? Like you. The same? Down here, though, because I'm going to put it up there. The rest is here. Yeah. Can I drop this? Oh, maybe. How does it work? No, I want to go up. Uh, down, down. <laughs> 